This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, and you're listening to Python's Paradise, your film and music show. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And you know what? I got a wonderful guest on the phone. In fact, she is the granddaughter of somebody that in many ways, I probably wouldn't be reviewing movies had it not been for this guy. I'm talking about Alfred Hitchcock, the great master himself. And I have one of his granddaughters who is so gracious to come on and give some time on here. Uh, please welcome uh, Terry Karuba. I said that right, right? You did. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Have you ever been to this part of the country? I have not been there. No, I would like to. <laughs> yeah, New Brunswick is a little small province in Canada. Okay. Yeah. How How is it in California? Uh, today it's very nice. Sun's out. Took a walk for about three miles, so... We got cloudy weather today. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful here. It's supposed to be cold, though, tomorrow. Well, oh. cold for us. Oh, Yeah. Go for us would be like in the 60s. Wow. <laughs> kind of a different way of life. <laughs> well, I, I am so honored to have you come on here and, 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 and talk about your grandfather. Like, i got a story to tell you. Um, I've been reviewing movies since 1996. Uh -huh. And I remember it was winter of that year. Um I went to my very first midnight screening of a film at that time I'd never seen. Uh, some of the university uh, uh, folks had put on a midnight screening of Psycho. And I remember the ad for it was something I think Alfred Hitchcock probably would have loved. It said, <laughs> come and see the movie that scared your parents. <laughs> oh, that, that, that'd be right. <laughs> it certainly did. It was the first time I'd seen it. I, I haven't watched black and white films a lot, and yeah. I loved it. Oh, good, oh, good. I never knew the plot twist. And uh, um, when I came out of there, not only did I want to see it again, I bought it on DVD, and I what I wanted to do, I wanted to check out some of his other films. And because of Alfred Hitchcock, I got introduced to James Stewart, Cary Grant, yeah, Grace Kelly. Some iconic actors and actresses. And I checked them out in the Hitchcock films, but I also got to check out their other films. And now I've embraced all, like I took uh, three film courses back at the turn of the century and did well in those. And I think I got to credit your grandfather for being an inspiration. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful to hear. Yeah. So I, I saw Psycho, and I'm going to tell you that shower scene, I'd never seen anything like it. Yes, it is, it is one of those. It's a, really a cinematic uh, masterpiece, you know, in some ways. When they made it, they really didn't think it was going to be that. I mean, they hadn't planned on it being that big a hit that it was. That sort of really launched his career into a whole different, you know, stratosphere of popularity. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you, one one of my most cherished possessions I have home, I actually have an autographed picture of Janet Lee. Oh, do you really? She was, you know, I got, actually got to know her as an adult. Uh, my mom and her used to do some traveling together, and she was, she, what a wonderful person. She was really sweet. Yeah, I liked her. Um, yeah, I wrote because I heard through an autograph collector magazine that she was one of the most reliable people mm -hmm. to get autographs through the mail. And oh, good for her. Yeah, yeah. I, that would not surprise me. Yeah. She's that type of actress. I, I feel sad. I feel sad that I wasn't doing this podcast back when she was alive because I, I would have loved to have gotten her on here. But Yeah, she, she probably would have done it too. Yeah, but... Um, Love, love Psycho. I love so many of your grandfather's films. I got a lot of them on Blu-ray home. But I got, got to ask, what was Alfred Hitchcock like as a grandfather? Because when he passed away, I, it was the year I turned eight. Uh, 1980. Yeah, 1980. I, I was born in July, so I would have been seven going on eight when mm -hmm. uh, he passed away. And um, I'm going to tell you... Um, 
Loved his work, loved his legacy, and uh, I gotta ask, what was he like as a grandfather? You know, he had quite a sense of humor. He was actually very, very funny. Most people, you know, have asked, did he scare you? And not at all. I mean, that just wasn't his. And, you know, the, our relationship also was when he was not at work, he was such a family man. You know, so, I mean, when he was at work, he was a completely different person because he was very focused on his work. And I was actually once, I think I was in high school and we were at an event, and people kept coming up and asking him for autographs, and it was kind of getting annoying to me. <laughs> and so I said to him, I go, Grandpa, I go, doesn't this get tiring? And he said, you know what, Terry, this is my audience. This is who I make movies for. Without them, I'd be nothing. And this is in the 70s, so, I mean, he's... He was very well known then, and he still never forgot who his paid audience was. That was I mean, he made movies for his audience, not for anybody else. Well, I, I gotta say too, like like people can talk about the CGI age all they want to. Um, like when Gus Van Sant did the shot for shot remake of Psycho, I uh-huh. hated it. Hated I, it. I chose not to see it. Oh, I trashed it. And um, <laughs> did you? Yeah, and I've got respect for Gus Van Sant with Goodwill Hunting and To Die uh, For and Drugstore Cowboy, but I hated the uh, Psycho remake. But um, with yeah, you know, it was interesting. We actually went on the set with my mother when he was doing that, and they, I think they thought it was going to be okay, but the all of a sudden this man walks out who's supposed to be looking like my grandfather, who looked nothing like him. <laughs> There's, yeah. just, there's just nobody that's ever done it well, and I just it's just it's, it's kind of eerie when it's a relative when somebody tries to look like them and they don't at all. So mm. that just kind of turned me off on it. Yeah, and um, uh, it must have been interesting too because when in 1972, the year I was born, he did Frenzy, mm-hmm. and Frenzy was quite a different. Um, term for Hitchcock and I like Frenzy but I, I, I like Frenzy too but it really it's the first time you see nudity in his films and I was wondering if he was under pressure because uh, I don't know whether it's uh, the audience was changing or well you know the cinema as you know changes throughout the years and there's different audiences and audiences grow up and and so I, I think he was just I think he was trying to be relevant, actually. Because when he's his last film was Family Plot, and that was relatively tame compared yeah, to... Yeah, I actually really like Family Plot. Yeah. Yeah, Karen Black in an early film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was relatively tame compared to Frenzy. Now, was that his decision because of some of the criticism Frenzy received, or...? I don't think so. You know, he uh, he never really listened to critics, Um he did what he felt he needed to do. If it was popular, it was popular. If it wasn't, it wasn't. Did uh, did he have any other films that he was going to make after Family Plot, or did his? Uh... Uh, there was one that was sort of getting tossed around, um, but no, he never made. No, he never did anything after that. Yeah, that was his last. Yeah, and, and he uh... was older by then too. You know, he was in his eighties. Yeah, like he was born in 1889. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, uh, like... Him and, him and my grandmother were actually born a day apart. He was Are you day kidding? Older than her. <laughs> yeah, Elma. He always, I guess in interviews, your mom, um, uh, Patricia Hitchcock O'Connell, uh-huh. would always say that he knew a movie was going to be good if Elma approved of the script. <laughs> Absolutely. Everything he did, they, they truly were partners in every sense of the word. Um, he he asked her advice on everything. In fact, when Psycho was right before Psycho was released, he had her come to the studio and look at a at the film before it was released to the general public. And she turned to him after it was over and said, "Hitch, you can't put that out." And he goes, "Well, why not?" And all the you know a bunch of the executives from Universal were there, and she said, "Well, because Janet Lee breathed," and she was the only person that picked it up. You, you oh. can't. You can see just a little tiny gelt, but you know. Yeah. But you, you know that aside, look, to hold your breath that long. So. Yeah. 
And I love that transition. Like the shower scene, all those cuts, like you never see the blade touch the body. No, never, never. But I but, love but that. the audience thought you did. Yeah. You know, the audience think, thought that they did, but they didn't. <laughs> And I love the fact that little shot of the drain and the, the blood, which I guess was syrup going, there's chocolate syrup going down the drain. Yeah. And then it goes, to, dissolves to the eye, the still eye. I think that was, that is what art is to me in cinema. Yes. Yes. I, I totally agree. Yeah. And it's just nice to hear too, a lot of the current filmmakers that really the, how important he was to their careers. You know, Steven Spielberg, Gus Van Zandt, you know, it's it's just nice to see that that and Martin Scorsese. Well, even Quentin Tarantino, uh -huh. if you, like if you've seen Pulp Fiction, there's two references to Psycho in it. I actually never saw it. Well, Pulp Fiction has um, a, a situation where Bruce Willis is at the uh, the lights and his mob boss walks in front of him and turns and sees him. You know that's from Psycho. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's, of course, a famous scene in uh, Pulp Fiction where um, Uma Thurman is overdosed on drugs and John Travolta has to give her a needle shot and he has to give it to her in the heart. And he has to jab the needle and the, he, the hand comes down and it just cuts right away and a, a shot of her reacting to it. And I'm like, that is going to be a Psycho reference. Yeah. That is a Hitchcock reference. Yeah. And, of course, you know, Quentin gave his own spin to it. But, again, you know, I think he complimented. And Quentin, of course, became a very, very accomplished filmmaker. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He's a wonderful filmmaker. Yeah. You haven't seen Pulp Fiction? No, I haven't. <laughs> very, very brutal film, but I haven't seen anything like it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I have heard that. Now, now I will definitely watch it. Yeah, but those two references I noticed with Psycho in it that uh, just kind of stood out to me. But, uh, yeah, I heard that Alfred Hitchcock had a pretty good sense of humor and that he was quite a prankster. Did he ever play a prank on you? He didn't play pranks on us. One year, they had a house up in Santa Cruz, California, uh, sort of like uh, way on top of a hill, and they used to love to get away from there. I mean, to get away to there. Um, and one year he dressed up as Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> did, did Alma was, dress up as Mrs. Claus? My mother was his only child, so we were, my sisters and I were his only grandchildren. So, you know, we were really close. I probably saw him at least once a week, every week of my life. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it never went, I mean, we were always over there, like on Sundays. We spent all of our holidays together. So he really was a family man. So tell me, uh, what was it like, uh, like, like, when did it uh, register to you? Like, how old were you when it be, you became aware that there was something about your grandfather that was very public? Um, probably about six or seven when we'd go someplace and people would just really um, make a big thing about him being there, like going through airports and stuff. Wow, Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I noticed, too, like on your, your Twitter page, what, what is that charity you do with uh, him? Well, we did. We, um, my niece had cystic fibrosis, and so after my grandfather died, we were trying to figure out how in a positive way that we could use, you know, be able to give back to the community and, and, and my, because my niece had it, and he was alive when she was diagnosed, and he was really devastated. He said, well, what can we do? What can I do? And so when he passed away, we thought, well, you know, let's do, in his name, the Alfred Hitchcock Foundation. We did charity golf tournaments and stuff to raise money in his name. Wow. Because we thought that would be something that he would be proud of being a part of. Yeah, I noticed that on your Twitter page. Yeah. We're really, we're really careful um, and really covet what, we, what his name is used for and what we do just because um, we just know that's what he would want us to do. Oh, absolutely. We went to a dog and pony show once. Um, I think it was at Universal. And, I mean, they were coming out. They wanted to make shower, psycho shower curtains and un underwear. And it was just, oh, my God, my sisters and I walked out and said, no. 
<laughs> no to it all. Psycho underwear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty weird. <laughs> yeah. But of course, um, you know, after uh I saw Psycho, as I said, I started checking out some of his other films and he did four films with James Stewart and four films with Cary Grant. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I liked all those films, um, very different actors too. James Stewart has a very endearing, uh, disposition to him and Cary Grant, very funny. I remember him, uh, George Clooney reminds me of Cary Grant somewhat. Absolutely. He does me too. Yeah. Did, uh, did you found that he worked a lot of times with the same people because he knew their worth, work ethic was like his. You know, he knew the way they worked. They were professionals. And then also Cary Grant and James Stewart became personal friends of him and my grandmother. I mean, they didn't have – they weren't the type of people that went to parties and openings unless it was his. Um, they just weren't – they would rather sit at home and read books and, you know, they're very quiet and kind of normal in that way. Yeah, we we celebrate James Stewart every year with It's a Wonderful Life at Christmas time, you know. We just get that Oh, that's such a classic. That's such a wonderful movie. Yeah, and of course he did for Hitchcock, he did Rope and he did uh um Rear Window, The Man Who Knew Too Much and uh, -huh. uh Vertigo and all great movies and of course Cary Grant was in Suspicion, Notorious, To Catch a Thief and North by Northwest. Again, all great movies. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, but I gotta say though, through Hitchcock, uh, I I finally saw the face of an angel because I don't think I've ever seen a woman as gorgeous as Grace Kelly. <laughs> yeah, she was she was beautiful. I get I'm gonna tell you I get goosebumps all over when I see that scene in Rear Window where James Stewart is in the wheelchair and the shadow comes over him. He slowly <laughs> opens his eyes and there's Grace Kelly's gorgeous face coming near and near and that slow motion shot where she kisses him and I'm like, this is how I want to wake up. Yeah, really? Can't this happen to me? <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I had such a crush on her and um, I, I still think she's the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen. Yeah, she, um, she, she was very close friends with them also. At one point there was talk of her after she had married Prince Rainier and was living in Monaco. Um, I think it was, and these were very, very preliminary discussions that kind of really didn't go too far, but I think it might have been Marnie. He was he wanted her to come back, and she just, by that time, she had her, her royal duties that she was doing, and, and so it didn't work out. But I know there was at least a conversation with her about making another movie. I wish, I, I don't know the personal details about this. I wasn't overly impressed with Prince Rainier for one big reason that, and this is from my perspective, it almost seems like he took her away from her public. And yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you. And I found that very disrespectful to her fans and not from her point, but from his point. Right. But so, then maybe that was, that's what was made her happy. Yeah, so she I don't... certainly had a choice on whether to go there or not. Yeah. Like, I heard that even her films don't get played there because of him. And I'm like, you know, what right does he have? I don't care if he's royalty oh, or not. I didn't know that. Wow, that's, that's pretty unusual. Well, that that's what I've heard. Now, mm -hmm. I don't quote me on it, but... <laughs> okay, I won't. <laughs> but I think I know I've read that somewhere, so... But I wasn't overly too keen on him. Uh -huh. But um, I, I would have loved to have seen her do Marnie. But, you know, uh, he did get Tippy Hedrum with the birds and Marnie, and, uh, you know, he still had these blondes. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I loved Grace Kelly. I wish she could have done done more films, and, and uh, you know, I wish she could have done Marnie. It would have been nice, and of course... Yeah, it would have been nice to see her back on the screen. And, of course, Ingrid Bergman, another gorgeous blonde that he worked with. He certainly could pick the talented ones and the, the gorgeous ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he knew what, it, what the audience wanted. Well, you know something? I've um, had the pleasure. I've seen Rear Window and Dial In for Murder four times theatrically. And I've seen, yeah, I've You've seen. You've probably seen them more than I have. <laughs> well, when, 
when they played for the classic film series up at the mall, I, I'd always go to his because I, I have to support Hitchcock every uh-huh. time. Yeah. And oh, I've, thank you. Yeah. And I've seen Psycho a couple of times. We got a thing down at, um, in the summertime we do, we, we screen movies outside for free. Oh, how fun. Yeah. And people bring their blankets and they'll, there's a place there you could buy refreshments and, and I remember the first year they did it was 2003, and they opened with To Catch a Thief. And Oh, I bet you that was really cool. Yeah. And I remember one year they played Rear Window, and I nudged my best friend, and I pointed ahead of me. Because the moment James Stewart is found out by the antagonist, right? there was a couple of girls sitting in front of us clutching each other. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That's great because it shows it still works. Yeah, yeah, it definitely still does. <laughs> yeah, and uh, boy, have a, a, a like I said, have a lot of fun with his films. Um, anything else that you want to share about growing up? Uh, how old were you when he had passed away? Um, I was in my twenties, probably twenty three, twenty four. Yeah, that that was sad. The, yes, the... I was an adult. That was sad when we lost him, huh? Yeah, that was very sad. Yeah, and but um, I, I he like had a good life. He certainly he certainly lived life to the fullest. Yeah, and of course his TV show was a big hit too. You know, like right. Yeah. Oh man, he enjoyed um, doing those the opening things. He he really enjoyed because that's where you kind of saw some of his um, his comedy come out in a in that. When he was doing the opening things for the TV show, the opening spots. Yeah, and you, oh. he always made those little appearances in his films. Yeah. <laughs> well, after a while, he started having to do it early in the film because people were paying too much attention trying to find, trying to find him in it. So that's why he always ended up doing it. It was always towards the beginning of the film. What would you so, say was his fav- your favorite appearance of his in a movie? I think it was Lifeboat. Where Did he you was ever the see that? I, I I actually haven't heard I haven't seen that one, but I've heard that he's actually the shape of a log. No, he it, it, on the, the the guy the, the gentleman in the boat. He's holding a newspaper, and on the back of the newspaper is an ad for weight loss, oh. and it's him. <laughs> oh, it's him. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I actually have, that is one of the few films he's done I have not seen. Um, probably one of my favorite appearances he did was in To Catch a Thief, where Cary Grant gets on the little trolley there, and he sees the woman sitting there with the bird beside him, and then he turns, there's Hitchcock. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Is that the one where he's got like a derby hat on or something? Um, I don't think so i could be wrong oh, okay i'm thinking it's a, I, well i certainly have not seen all of them <laughs> you haven't seen them all no because i was a child when he made a lot of them i mean i was only in second grade when he made psycho oh, wow second third grade so i was young when he made most of them wow was you um on the set for many of his films no, no, we what well, we went on the set or when he was doing the birds. What was that like? Um, it was well, it was beautiful where it was, Bodega Bay up in Northern California is gorgeous. But um, it was never it, he was a different person when he was at work, and so it wasn't it wasn't the kind of atmosphere that was conductive to having small children around. Well, he did have Veronica Cartwright, though. Right? Yeah. Well, they were working. <laughs> <laughs> My sisters and I weren't. <laughs> Veronica was very lucky. She went on to do Invasion of the Body Snatchers and Alien, uh, yeah, you know. And yeah, she she had a she had a great career too. Yeah, she did quite quite well. But uh, yeah, I I'm going to tell you, like I said, when I first saw Psycho at that midnight screening. That's when I, I became convinced I wanted to do film criticism, and I've never given a Hitchcock film a negative review. Oh, that's nice. That's sweet. I've loved everything he's done, some more than others, but nonetheless, yeah. I've given him a lot of tens, I'll tell you that. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. Like, 
Like well, you know what? He was a cinematic genius, and you know now colleges teach courses just on Hitchcock films. It's quite an honor, and I'm extremely proud of of the legacy that he left us. Yeah, and um, yeah, I think he did. I think it was something like fifty three films or something mm-hmm. like that. I, yeah, fifty two, I think. Something like that. Yeah, I think fam- Family Plot. I think was the last uh-huh. one. And uh, I would have well, been... he had very, really bad arthritis towards the end of his life. So it was really difficult for him to get around. Oh. Yeah, I would have been four when uh, Family Plot came out. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm lucky, though, with some of these revivals, I can see screenings of some of these films. So I can see them in a theatrical um, release, which is nice. And I think some of them, you know, now, of course, now there's so many are available you know, on DVD or you can stream them and yeah. I mean, I think, I think probably pretty much most of his move. Well, probably not the early ones are probably available through someone. <laughs> I think he made his first film the year my grandmother was born. 1926. Yeah. I was going to say, I knew it was in the twenties. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, 1926. I forget what the name of that film was now. But um, the lodger was that it? I believe it was the lodger, and I think it was based on the Jack the Ripper. Okay, and I know that I, I could be wrong, but I think I think so. Yeah, and I know he did two versions of uh, the Man Who Knew Too Much, and mm-hmm. both yeah, I like both versions. And uh, I think Rebecca was his first American film. Was that right? Yes, David Selznick brought him over from England. Yeah. To do Rebecca. Here's something I got to bring up, though. And this is, I know Martin Scorsese's finally for The Departed won an Oscar. And I know this has been controversial. Stanley Kubrick went through this. And uh, I, I'm devastated that Alfred Hitchcock never won the Oscar. And he was nominated four or five times. Mm-hmm. And wow, like. I remember well, there was... you know, I think the way he had explained it to me, you know, I and I I don't know if it's the same now, but there's a lot of campaigning for Oscars mm-hmm. and I just, you know, he, it wasn't important to him. I don't think it ever bothered him that he never got an Oscar because like I said, he made his movies for the audience and not the critics. Yeah. And he certainly didn't make them to get awards. Well, I know there was this um when he got the uh, the honorary award, there's been a lot of talk. Like he just went up, and all he said was uh, "thank you," and he walked <laughs> off. <laughs> that probably threw a lot of people, especially the ones producing the show. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? When you think of some of the stuff, like um, I know he had some pretty stiff competition, like Psycho. Uh, I know he's up against Billy Wilder for The Apartment, and of course that was a great movie as well. Uh-huh. But I mean, um, as great as The Apartment was, you can't deny that shower scene was something different. I can't believe Hitch did not win, but I think it was because Psycho was kind of... in the long run, now that people look back and looked at all the movies, that he probably, he probably, uh, of all the ones you remember, or which ones are still popular... I think his are probably might be a little bit more popular than some of the other films that he was up against then. Yeah. And he was nominated for Rear Window. And of course, he was up against, of course, Eliza Kazan for On the Waterfront. Again, another great movie. Yeah. But I mean, when you look at Rear Window, I mean, amazing. Like, you're in James Stewart's position, the whole film. You're seeing what he sees, you're observing what he observes. And, and it's interesting because. Like when Grace Kelly is being attacked, you know, the audience can't do anything either. You're in the same position as James Stewart. Right. So you really, you really have empathy for the man. Yeah. And when, when Raymond Burr looks over James Stewart, he's actually staring at the viewer. Yeah. (laughs) Like Hitchcock, nobody did it like he could. No, no, you're right. You're right. Wow. And of course, um, how, how is your mom doing? Um, she's not doing well. Uh, she's, well, she's 87 now. So, um, she's still at home. She's got full-time nursing care. 
Yeah, I know I that. I go down to see her about once a month. My sisters live close by also. Yeah, she, um, I know, does a lot of the DVD and Blu-ray interviews. And yeah, she used to. I, I, I love it when um, she does, though, but she's also appeared in some of Hitch's films, too. She was. She was in, uh, well, she played Janet Lee's secretary in Psycho. Yeah, I remember the tranquilizer comment. <laughs> uh-huh. And then she also uh, was in Strangers on a Train. Yeah. Now that she had... She that. I mean, I know I probably shouldn't say it because she's my mother, but I thought she was really funny in that movie. Yeah, and of course, Robert Walker, one of the great villains. Yes. <laughs> I love that that uh, murder scene told through, like, shown through the sun, or the glasses. Yes, yes. Like, again, no, yeah, there's... Some of those shots, it was just so, uh, now that you look back on it, it was just a lot of cinematic verse. You know, nobody yes. did movies like that. Yeah. And some of the shots that he used. Oh, man, and he didn't have CGI and computers and stuff like that. No, no, he didn't. I mean, I remember my sisters and I, he, uh, he wanted my sister and I to come over after um, after we'd gotten out of school once we went over, and he wanted to show us this machine he got, and it took him probably 45 minutes to figure out how to use it, and it was a beta, <laughs> and it <had> just come out. <laughs> and he was just, it was just... It, he had no idea about this new technology. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Well, you know, <clears throat> yeah, that is kind of funny. They should have had that on camera. We could have saw some of his sense of humor then. Yeah, yeah. Well, and his frustration. <laughs> <laughs> He'd always say, good evening. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, was there any of his films that he was dissatisfied with? I'm, there, I'm sure there was some that he, he thought he, it could have been better. Um, I'm not sure what they are, but yeah. I don't. I think out of the 52 films he made, I'm sure there were some that he probably was more disappointed than others. Yeah, I know because studios interfere a lot in movies, and uh-huh. yeah, I don't know whether he had to deal with that because that was back too when the Hayes Code was going on and. Right. Yeah. I think he had some difficulty getting actually getting them to release Psycho. Yeah. If I me- remember reading back on it, I think there was a problem with the rating, with the um, the motion picture coding, and 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 you know releasing it because they thought it was too violent. And it's funny what they're releasing today. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. <laughs> like that would have been easy to get through. <laughs> exactly. Like like. The stuff, some of the, the stuff that they're passing for PG-13 today, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it amazes me. On, I mean, I'm not sure I would want my 13-year-old going to see a lot of the movies that they rate is okay for a 13-year-old. I agree. I agree. But, uh, yeah, like, like I said, when I first saw Psycho, it changed the way I view movies, like, I I um I see the story going going by I love the way he told movies by the way he shot them. Yes, yes. And so much innovation. So as some form of fun, as I told you on Twitter, <laughs> we're gonna share our top five favorite Hitchcock movie. Now this was hard for me to do too. Okay. I had to think about it. <laughs> yeah. What is your number five? My number five is probably Vertigo. Ah, oh, great movie. I, now, I love that movie. Why did you like that movie? Um, I just thought I loved the story. I liked all the twists and turns in it. Um, it he loved to be to film in the Bay, San Francisco Bay Area. Beautiful. Yeah, it's it's gorgeous. So um, yeah, so my number five would be, probably be Vertigo. It has that great image where um, she jumps in the the water and uh, and uh, yeah. James Stewart has to pull Kim Novak out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I she, just she was actually I, I when they re released Vertigo. Um, I think it was in eighty eighty four, maybe. Um, no, it was no, it was later than that. I'm sorry. It was probably in the nineties. Uh we did a my went with my mother, Kim Novak, and the two gentlemen that had re had remastered it. We did a tour of Europe 
and I got to spend a lot of time with Kim Novak. She was a she was a really nice lady. Yeah, like um, and she's still around too. Yeah, I I believe she lives up in Oregon. I think her husband's a vet. She lives on a big huge farm and I wonder if I could get her on here. <laughs> she doesn't do a whole lot for for any anybody. Yeah, I heard that about Vera Miles for Psycho too, uh, but doesn't do interviews anymore. I know John Gavin's still alive, but but um I don't know whether it's because interviewers have rubbed them the wrong way. I try to treat everybody I interview with respect and Yes. Yeah, like so far well, you're I think too. I think more than that it's probably their ages. I mean, they're all older now and you know, maybe their recollections aren't what they were. Yeah. No, um yeah, Kim Novak was just very elegant in that movie. I I just interviewed Deborah Shelton on here, and of course, um, uh, one person that was inspired by Hitchcock, of course, was Brian De Palma. Yes, and I loved I love Brian De Palma. I love Dress to Kill, Sisters, and he, of course, uh, the Body Double. And I was saying to uh, Deborah Shelton, there was that scene where she does a kissing scene, and the camera spinning all around her and uh, Craig Wesson. I said, yeah. that's a vertigo shot. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, do, do you know what um, Hitchcock thought of uh, Brian De Palma's uh, movies? Um, I, I think he respected him as a director. I knew, I know they knew each other. I think they met maybe once. Yeah. So a lot of people accuse De Palma of, of ripping off Hitchcock, but I think De Palma. Well, I think it's a. I think it's a. I look at it as positive. I mean, yeah, that somebody thought enough about the way my grandfather made films that they would want to try to, you know, try to do that in their own films. I think that's an honor. I I agree, and I think for his that legacy. I think De Palma also added his own spin in the screenplay as mm -hmm. well. Like Dress to Kill dealt with the transvestism thing, and Sisters had the Siamese twin thing, and right. and Body Double had the whole underground um, uh, porn industry thing going yeah. on in it. So I think De Palma complimented your grandfather. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, your number five was Vertigo. I, you know what? It was toss up for me between Vertigo and Frenzy. Um, I gotta go with Frenzy because I love that scene on back of the potato truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was great. And the, the guy, I forget who who was the actor that played the villain. I can't remember. Uh, I see his face and I can't remember his name. Oh, he was so good too. Yeah, that was kind of a, a hard shoot for my grandfather. Um, they were over in England, and my grandmother suffered a stroke while they were there. Oh. So that 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 was kind of a tough shoot for him. Yeah, he um Yeah, did did he have because a at one point my sister for her high school graduation was going to fly to England and while my grandfather made was shooting, the, uh my grandmother was going to take her around Europe to go see the pope and you know to show her do some traveling and then um my grandmother had her stroke like the day before Mary left. And so she got to the airport and there was nobody there. And then so finally my grandfather's assistant came and got her. In the oh. meantime, they had called my mother, and so my mother flew over there. Yeah, well, that... He, you know, like I said earlier, she was such a large part of his personal and professional life that um, when she was sick, it just devastated him. He just didn't know how... He didn't know how to get along without her. Oh, Wow. Wow, sorry to hear that. Yeah. D did he have problems with frenzy with the censors? No, I don't think so. I don't think at that time. I think he had more of a problem with Psycho with the censors. What's your number four pick? My number four is Family Plot. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> I like that movie. <laughs> it wasn't one of, probably one of his most popular, but I really enjoyed it. It had uh, Bruce Dern still working uh -huh, today. Bruce Dern, yeah. He was great. Yeah, he was just in The Hateful Eight, too. Mm hmm Yeah, Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, um, what, what what did you like about Family Plot? I think it's probably, I think a lot of it probably is because I was older when he made Family Plot, so it's kind of more aware of hearing stuff that had happened on the, on the set or, 
even though they didn't really talk a lot about – he didn't talk about his work a lot with us. Okay. Well, my number four is North by Northwest. Oh, that's great. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I love that opening title sequence, too, where all the lines are coming past and it yes, comes yes. to building. But I got to say, Cary Grant, I think, is at his most hilarious in yeah. – <laughs> <laughs> North by Northwest. He was he was really good in that, especially when he's being drunk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was great. Yeah, loved him in North by Northwest, and uh, Eva Marie Saint in that. She, I think, she's still with us. Yes, I, I believe she is. I believe she is. I just saw something of her on TV recently. Yeah, and um, of course, one of those lovely blondes and that uh, Hitchcock that uh, went for. Yes. And what is your number three? My number three was Psycho. You know what? Number three for me is Psycho as well. Oh, <laughs> oh great. Mine's think alike. Well, well, what what uh, you get to say about Psycho? Um, you know, it just it didn't scare me. I guess it's because I knew I knew something was going to happen. It just didn't. You know, I don't ever remember being frightened by it. I thought it was good. I thought it was really good. We actually showed it at one of my birthday parties once when I was little. I'm sure my friends probably didn't really like it, but oh well. <laughs> well, yeah, I heard that. Uh, I think it's what the is it somewhere in Hollywood or Disney or someplace they got the house. Uh, Universal Studios has. It. Okay. Yeah, Universal Studios has it. Yeah, I've never I've never been to California. In fact, I haven't even been outside New Brunswick. But oh, you have. <laughs> oh, you'll have to go. Yeah, but I know somebody that's been in the house. So, so is it the actual house or is it? It's the actual outside of the house. Wow. You can go through it and tour all through. Uh, I don't think you can go through it. It's just the facade of the outside of the house. Oh, okay. Yeah, because. And then to... below it, they have the motel. Oh, yeah. Yes. Psycho looks so great in black and white. And, of course, Anthony Perkins. How... That movie would have been ruined if it had been color. I think it had more of an effect on people because it was black and white. Yeah, I agree. But, um, you know, Anthony Perkins, how he didn't get an Oscar nomination, I'll never oh understand. God, he was fabulous in that movie. Oh, he was so great. Yeah, he was really good. And uh, I love that, that, that shot about the he would need, or she wouldn't even hurt a fly, and he kind of looks up and yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, Psycho is great, and I love the whole Janet Lee being introduced and being picked off about 45 minutes yeah, into the movie. Yeah, early in the film, the star dies, yep. And there are some filmmakers that's picked up on that, too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So what's your number two pick? Uh, the Birds. Ah, uh, The Birds is great. Yeah, I love that. I love The Birds. I've, I've, seen... Probably, seen, I've probably seen The Birds probably more than I've seen any of his other films. You know, I've um, seen the bird screen twice. Mm -hmm. Both experiences were different. Once I saw it at the end of the stars, uh, classic film series down on the greens outside and, uh -huh. and people generally were amused with it. But when I saw it at a midnight screening one night, people were a little more terrified of it. Interesting. Yeah. You know, he always said that it's, and I'm sure it's probably, I'm sure it's probably true, is that it's really different. Like for him, he would see a lot of movies in a screening room at his office. And you get, my grandmother used to say, you get a completely different feeling when you see it with an audience as opposed to not seeing it with an audience. Like the audience becomes part of your, your the experience of watching the film. I agree. Well, I found... Like a lot of movies, if you watched them in your living room and then watched it in a... or were in a theater, it would probably look like a completely different film because you get the audience reaction. I agree. Yeah, that's when I review movies is when I see it with an audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I found some interesting stuff about the birds. Isn't it interesting <coughs> Excuse me, that the lovebirds don't seem to be affected? And I wonder if that was symbolic. I'm not sure on the symbolism. I know that after they made that movie, they gave us the lovebirds. Oh, yeah? Yeah, my sister and I had the lovebirds after that. Oh, wow. I, I didn't know what that's symbolic because they're lovebirds, because they didn't seem to be aggressive. No. 
Um, one of the things I never quite understood, now it's never explained, is why the birds are attacking. Um, no, the movie never explains why they are. And the the plot solution never happens either. But yeah, but there is definitely some great tension, like um, like when Tippy Hedren, for example, gets attacked in the attic, and it's kind of again like a reference to Psycho, where instead of the shower scene and the the butcher knife, it's the birds coming it's at the birds, her. Yeah, attacking her. I know there was a um, in Santa Cruz, California. There years ago, there had and it. I've heard that part of the film was based on uh, sea. I think they were seagulls or some kind of birds that were attacking people in a beach town, Capitola. Okay. So um, I don't. I don't know if that's true, but it could be. Yeah. That was a true story. That I mean, like that really happened. Didn't kill anybody, but. Yeah, and of course Jessica Tandy in that as well. Yeah, she was good. Yeah. Well, I like the fact that. Um, she yeah, ends she up became their personal friend also, her and her husband. Yeah, Hume Crone. Hume Cronin. Yeah. Yeah, I love that there towards the end she gets it's kinda of interesting. She um comes comes to accept Tippy Hedron's character. Yes. Yeah, and when um Rod Taylor has to go out to the garage and all the birds are there and he has to walk so slowly and I remember he puts his hand out yeah. and while well, the birds nicks him and <laughs> He has he was to be a handsome. He was very handsome. He's still around too. Is he? Uh, well, I, 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 if I, I think he was in *Inglorious Bastards*, which was a Tarantino film. Oh, okay. I think he had just a small part in it, but I, I think it was Rod Taylor, hmm. if I remember the credits right. But uh, I know sometimes I'll listen to when I or I'll be reading the paper and see that somebody died, and I think, oh, I thought they already did. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, Birds was definitely a terrific film. Loved it. Even the scene where she's in the phone booth and they're yes. cracking the glass. But uh, the fire. Yeah. You watch the gas dripping. Yeah, and the bird lady who had all this information. Um, my number two pick is a gorgeous film, probably one of the most gorgeous of Hitchcock's films to look at, and that is To Catch a Thief. Oh, yes. Man, the scenery in that movie is unbelievable. Oh, wow. And of course, it doesn't hurt that uh, part of the gorgeousness is, of course, Grace, <laughs> Grace Kelly. Kelly. Your favorite. <laughs> oh, man, I could look at her all day. <laughs> oh, man, when she turns and kisses Cary Grant for the first time, I'm like, over here, over here. <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. She, she, that, you know, that, that was such a tragic end to her life. I felt bad. I would have been 10 when she passed away mm -hmm. and was in that car accident. And yeah, uh, yeah I, I, what a loss. Oh, absolutely. And she only did, I think, 10 or 11 films, but she did three for Hitch. Yeah. Yeah. And she um, said it, he, he was her favorite director to work with. Yeah. And um, how, how it was a loss, too. Like when, when she. She got uh, married. It's like, you know, like the public ended up losing her, you know? Yes. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, like I said, that was the life she chose. Yeah. You know, I can't fault her there. But To Catch a Thief, again, gorgeous film to look at. Especially also, too, like the, um, I forget the name of the girl, the, 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 the little tiny girl he hooks up with that drives him in the boat. Oh. Oh, I can't remember. I just thought she was funny. Yeah, I don't remember her name either. Yeah. So what's your number one? My number pick? one is Strangers on a Train. Oh, great I love movie. all the twists and turns in that, and there was constantly things happening, and, and you know, and the key drops below, and the grate, and the, and the tennis match, and there was just so much, there, there was so much going on in that movie, and so many twists and turns. I really enjoyed that. And Robert Walker again. How uh -huh. great was he? Yeah. Oh, he oh he played a great villain in the film. Well, my number one pick is Rear Window. Oh, definitely a classic. Oh, I love Rear Window, and I just I love the detail. Like James Stewart is in his little apartment, looking out yeah. the window, and all these people that you get to know. Even though they're not exactly speaking at you, you know? 
Right. You never hear them talk, but you feel like you know them. Yeah. In fact, I, I think there's only one person from that film alive. Like, I heard the guy that um, I, uh, comes on to Miss Lonely Hearts. I think he's 94 years old. I think he's still alive. Oh, wow. Yeah. I trying to see if I could find somebody from that film that I could interview, but I was like, jeepers, everybody's gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember Miss Torso, of course. Yep, yep. No, that was great. I, I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, and it's it's just like everybody was doing something. And then, of course, you had that one ominous apartment with the salesman and his wife. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and of course, uh, Thelma Ritter, great in that film. Oh, she was really good. She, I think she was actually in several films of my grandfather's. Yeah, and... Uh, she she very memorable in this, and she would always. Uh, I I loved it too. Like I said, she and Grace Kelly would go outside there, and they dig up the flower bed. And like I said, when Grace Kelly chooses to go in the uh, apartment across the way, it's like you're like James Stewart. He can't do yeah. nothing, and neither can we. I loved how yeah. Hitchcock did that. On the edge of your seat. Oh, on the edge well, of your that's seat. What he was good at. Yeah. No, Rear Window, I think, is my favorite of your grandfather's films. And uh, it's kind of hard, too, to pick a favorite because, like like I said, like, like even you, you pick Vertigo. Vertigo is also a great movie, you know? Yes, yes. Yeah, so, so many you could pick from from his films. And, uh, well, yeah. and they were all, I think what was nice, too, is they were all really different. You know, yes. like storylines, like... You know, sometimes you can be familiar, and maybe it's even an actress or somebody, but it's like they play the same role over and over again, or, you know, the directors direct the movies, always the same, and and you can, it's kind of like their footprint on their movie, or and uh, his were always so different. And some of the shots he gave, like even in Spellbound with the drinking of the milk, mm -hmm. interesting, coming right at the camera. right. Or scenes like uh, in Notorious where Cary Grant and, and uh, Ingrid Bergman have to go down the steps there. And it's like the antagonist is right there, but he can't do anything, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, things like that. And uh, I'm, I'm so happy that the Under the Stars classic film series, I've been able to see a nice audience presentation of a lot of these films. And Oh, uh, that's good. That's great. Oh, yeah. We've got... Um, I know The Man Who Knew Too Much is supposed to play down there this year. It's, I think it's a 1956 version. Okay. I've, I've, I've seen a screening of the original version. And the original version played, but it was supposed to be the 1956 version. So I, they got a mix oh, up there. <laughs> but you know what? I think both versions are good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I do too. I do too. And I think another one of his is supposed to play down there as well, but I can't. Off the top of my head, think of what it is. I know. Do they do them in the summertime? Yeah, they do oh, it okay. in um, July and August. They do it on um, on Sunday night. They're doing it on Saturday night this year with more modern films. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, but they do it since two thousand three. It's called the Under the Stars Classic Film Series. Oh wow! Yeah, and they they do that kind of something. Um, people can go down. Too and it uh, doesn't cost anything, and they have refreshments there. I remember we did oh, Roman. Fun. That sounds great. Oh yeah, Roman Holiday. They did one one Sunday a few years ago, and there was people in from the states. Really? And they were like, they heard about this, and they came down and joined. You know? Yeah. Oh, wow, how nice. Yeah, the only time it gets canceled if it rains, obviously, you know, but. Yeah. But uh, they played several Hitchcock movies down there, like um, uh, Rear Windows played To Catch a Thief, The Trouble with Harry, which is an amusing oh, film. That was, that was good. That was funny. That was a great movie. <laughs> yeah. Everybody kept thinking they killed Harry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Teresa, I'm going to tell you, it, it was such an honor to have you come oh, on here. Wonderful. It was really fun. It was really nice. Thank yeah. you very much. You got uh, two sisters too, huh? I do. I have an older sister, Mary, and a younger sister, Katie. Well, you know what? They're welcome to come on here too if they'd like. Okay. Yeah. I I, I was I looked up all three 
of you, and I found you on Twitter. I was like, I'm going to take a shot at you and see if you... I was so honored when you responded. I was like, good, I could do an Alfred Hitchcock tribute. (laughs) Well, that's wonderful. Thank you. Like I said, I'm certainly proud of his work and his legacy. Yeah. You know, people like you that, that are constantly, you know, being able to keep his name out there and keep his films alive it's 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 wonderful so thank you well you know what you you don't get movies like his anymore no no you really don't like uh, even like just watching just for the shots you know uh-huh. like just amazing and uh, like i said i even listen to commentary tracks and documentaries on the film like your mom is a really good one for interviewing you know yeah, and i love is, she is really good and and she and her stories um are more i mean she was around for almost all of them so yeah well i i hope she's going to be feeling better you know yeah it's just it, she's got a little bit of dementia and alzheimer's so yeah yeah well i love watching but her she in interviews do interviews anymore yeah. Well, I looked her up, but I thought, you know, I don't want to, don't want to bother her. You know, I think the oldest person I interviewed on here was ninety. Oh, really? <laughs> I had a stunt man come on here and and talk. So. It was, oh wow, that's great. Yeah, but I wanted to get somebody related to Alfred Hitchcock because I was like, man, you know, that would be so cool. And oh, good. Oh, I'm I'm glad I'm glad you you got you got in touch with me. I I'm glad too. Like, yeah, thank it was you. Wonderful. Yeah. So we're taking this time to salute your grandfather, the great and wonderful, the talented, the memorable Alfred Hitchcock. Well, thank you very much. And I'm going to tell you, I hope that uh, you guys are as proud of his legacy as I am. You oh, got... absolutely. We definitely are. <laughs> well, you know, do you got any charities or anything you want to plug before we close off? Um, right now, I'm doing a lot of work for the Living Breast Foundation, which is another cystic fibrosis. Um, what they do is, from Monterey to up to Stanford and Palo Alto, um, we raise money to give, because a lot of CF patients, they go to the hospital. They're not always, or they go to the doctor. Some of them go straight into a hospital without pajamas, or and we give gift cards to the parents for gas money and and so, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of that. Is there like a web page or people can go to for that? Uh, the Living Breast Foundation. Okay. All right. And uh, this, uh, the charity, the golf uh, charity thing that you do, is there a web page yeah, for that? Um, we actually don't do it anymore. Oh. We did it, for, we did it for, my mother did it for five years and then I did it for another 10. Oh, okay. And um, just between having kids and them growing up it just sort of we were we weren't we really didn't have find the time enough i guess enough time to really warrant doing it and because if you're going to do it do it right okay yeah well if you're talking to your sisters tell them they're more than welcome to come on here okay I will. I'll, I'll, I'll give them a top five uh, countdown as well and okay. uh I'm so happy. Thank you for coming on here and do this. Next week, my youngest daughter's getting married. What's that? My youngest daughter's getting married next weekend in Philadelphia. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Congratulations. Wow. What does she think of her uh, great grandfather? Um, Well, you know her. I have two daughters. One is uh, 32, and Kate is 26, Kate and Tricia. Okay. They they would not have been around when. Your grandfather? No, no, none of them were even born before he died. What do they think of his legacy? Oh, they're really proud of it. They're very, very proud of it. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're all very, very proud. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, you know what, Teresa? Thank you for coming on to the show and giving this wonderful tribute to Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, you're welcome. Yes. You have yourself a wonderful day and God bless you. And, And we'll keep in touch, okay? Sure, you got okay, me on. Great. You've Thank got you. me on Twitter, and I'll send this link out to you whenever I podcast it out. Okay. Oh, perfect. Okay. God bless. Oh, one more question. Sure. Um, I'm going to eventually put the interview on YouTube. Uh huh. And I was wondering, do if I had any permission to use like any headshots of uh, Alfred Hitchcock to go along with the audio? Yeah, whatever's out there in the internet's probably okay. I mean, there's certain things that we we own, but um. Usually all the stuff on the internet's okay. Okay. 
Yeah, because I think in December or November, that's when it's going to come on YouTube, but I'm going to be podcasting here on the radio within the next few weeks. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of publicity stuff that's out there that... Okay. Okay. Well, God bless you. Uh, Thank you. God bless you, too. Okay. Thank you. Yep, bye-bye.